uh, we've got uh, the manager, Gary Johnson, and, and his assistant, Terry Skimmerton, just to uh, answer a few questions as to uh, the speculation that's flowing around the club and transfer targets, etc., etc., and holidays coming up. Um, first of all, Gary, before we get on to that, pitch just been redone. You pleased with that? <laughs> Not at the moment, mate. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a nice home for the Seagulls. Yeah. But um, we were very, very happy with our pitch at the end of the season. And uh, the, the new groundsman, Richard, he's, he's done a fantastic job. We trust him. And uh, as you can see, uh, he's at the early stages of a new pitch. And, uh, and we got total faith in him. And we're sure that that pitch will be the best it can be come August the 8th, 7th. Terry, you, you, you experienced it when you were manager. I mean, the pitch wasn't so good in those days. I mean, just what sort of a difference does it make to the to the performance of the team then when the pitch is bad? Well, I remember the the first changeover was when I was playing under the gaffer, and um, when we did lay that new pitch, it really did transform, especially the early performances. And um, you know, there's nothing better than having a really good surface where you can get out there and do certain days training as well. I remember, we used to be out there during the week, so. Rich has promised us that with the, the pitch that we're going to have. So I think it's vitally important. And I remember you saying it was, it was your best signing that season, wasn't it? Because it really did transform the way, obviously under the, the gaffer, the way that we want to play football is on the floor. And we want a pitch that's going to be conducive to that. And we felt Richard got it right towards the end of the season. And um, you know he really did repair after some horrific weather earlier on. And we're looking to kick on and make sure that it's a really good surface for next year. Um. Gary, I mean, obviously at this time of the year, there's always speculation about players coming in, players leaving, and the rest of it. We talk about the, the three sort of made ones. We know that you've made them an offer. Can you update us any, any news on the, the three? That's Byron, Marrick, and um, Luke Ayling. No, um, all I can tell you is that obviously Luke Ayling's under 24, so that means he's compensation anyway. So that will go to a tribunal if two clubs can't agree if he goes somewhere. Uh, we believe that the other two will probably join someone else. We haven't heard any different that they, they've turned down their offers here. Um, so, uh, you know, as you say, it's all, everything else is always speculation and managers and assistant managers, we can't divulge our, uh, the players that we got in mind for fear of other people being interested. Um, you know, we're trying to be clever ourselves, let alone put names into other people's uh, in front of other clubs. Um, so, you know, we're trying very hard. We got together today. We've sort of put a team together that we think would compete in the first division. And, uh, and both agree that if we got that team, it would be pretty strong. And now all I've got to work out is whether our, our budget warrants and is conducive to that group of players. Everybody was getting well worked up about the retain list or the release list. Um, do you, as, as a manager pair, do you look at other clubs, uh, their retained and, and release list? I mean, I presume it upwards rather than downwards? Yeah, I think you need to know what's out there. You need to know players, especially you've had on your radar, because every year there's always a turnover. And, you know, we've got our, with Pete, Darren, myself, and with the gaffer, you know, we've got our finger on the pulse. We know the players that are out there. And, you know, we've already spoke to a, a number of people that we'd like to try and get in. and. We're not on holiday as, as we speak because you know we've been in working we had a the LMA awards was on earlier in the week and we met up at, um, earlier in the day and, and, and we was working that day as well all, basically all afternoon so yeah. you know we're, we're out there we're very active and we're making sure that the ones that we do bring in are gonna as the manager says be competitive in League One. After the success of Tom Lawrence um, you know suddenly straight back in the Man United first team um, do you think that that's going to hold you in good stead with people like Warren Joyce to get better players down from United now? Well, you'd like to think so. I mean, they were very pleased with what we did with Tom Lawrence. Um, they said he came to us a boy and went back a man, so that was a, a nice compliment to us. We know that, uh, they know that when they come to teams like ours, they're not treated as young players, they're treated as first team players. So they get the stick with everybody else. Um, they take the praise with everybody else. And I think it mans them up a little bit pretty, pretty quickly. And, um, and he, had, you know, he had a good time with us and it was great that Man United kept an eye on him, gave him the last game of the season and uh, scored the goal in the uh, cup final against Chelsea the other night, although they lost. Um, you know, if we've done a good job for them and they know that, then hopefully they, uh, we're one of the clubs that will be top of their list for 
some of their up and coming stars, we would like to think. Um, this financial fair play, I'm sure, you know, I know you've had meetings with the board about your budget and what have you, it's going to play a, a huge part in, in the whole calculations of, of what you can afford and what you can't. Well, the budget is a calculation at the moment, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's not somebody giving money or somebody with long pockets and short arms, you know, it's nothing to do with that. It's, it's all about equations and, uh, and you're only allowed to spend 54%, it is, it's 60, but you have to start at 54% of your total turnover. So, obviously, you know what your turnover is. Um, you know what your average gate is in the first division and then you can only use 54% of that so it's an equation me and Terry are going to have to talk about that equation in a minute and see whether that is as I say conducive to the team that we've got listed um, and if it isn't we're going to have to go with our second or third teams. So presumably though, for, from the fans' perspective, your, your message to them would be, if you've got any sort of love of Yeovil Town, please come to the games, because the more fans that come through, the better your budget's going to be. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, we're always grateful for the ones that are here. You know, sometimes you can moan about, you know, not having enough crowd, and, and yet the same ones are here every week. So we can't moan about our support, because that group of people have been magnificent, the 5,000 and the... 500 or 1,000 always travelled away with us, you know, they were fantastic as well. But I've been saying for two seasons now that the club needs a gate of seven, 8,000 home supporters and then we can compete properly with, with the first division level, level, let alone anywhere else. And if you don't get that, then unfortunately your turnover's a lot lower, in which case uh, the finances that you can offer players are a lot lower. But presumably from, from, from the club's perspective, um, at least we're going to be on a level playing field to a degree with the rest of the division. I mean, obviously your Sheffield United and I don't know, I'm just trying to think of who else gets big gates in League One. I can't think of anybody else immediately, but they're going to do better than us. But I mean, there's going to be a lot of clubs that are going to be around the same level as we are. So they're going to be affected by the financial fair play, same as we are. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, from our point of view, I think we're going into this season in a lot stronger position than what we have been in previous years. Yeah. And uh, I think that probably reflects in the, you know, I think our um, odds to get ourselves promoted again. So yeah. with us going and, and being in the championship, it's put us in a decent position. We've come back to the, the League One level. We know it's going to be a tough season and it's going to be another long season, but you know, it's one that we're looking forward to and we're in. You know, uh, squad-wise, we're in a better position than we've been in previous years, and you know, we're looking to kick on and, and be really competitive again. And um, with, you know, for me being an assistant manager and uh, you know, and a coach, it's not so much about the, 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 the financial fair play. It's down to the, you know, the gaffer and, and with Pete along, <laughs> along with us. But having to pull out these players and make sure that we get in there early and we get the players that we want to make sure that we can go up and. Whether you're doing it against the odds or not, you, you've got to make sure you're up there and you're in with the running again. Um, July the 1st, is that when everybody comes back for full-time training again? Yeah. And uh, club tour, or anything happening on that front? Because I'm sure the fans will want to know. Well, any, any finances that you, um, you spend now, i.e. club tour, comes out of your budget. Yeah. So, you know, it may be that we have to forsake a club tour to make sure we have a another player or mm. get an extra player but we do feel that taking the boys away um, is a big positive and a big plus because a, a week away is like a month at the club and you mm. can get to know your new players they can get to know each other um, very quickly you get to know their some of their idiosyncrasies and their habits uh, whether it be good or bad and so we'd like to go away somewhere but um, if it you know it probably won't involve a boat or a plane so I was going to ask you a few questions about uh various names that are floating about, but knowing what you've already said about the, the question of, of other people latching on to what we've got as targets, etc. I mean, do you find that frustrating with social media and other websites that these names keep getting banded about and if, you, if, if one of them does get out that you particularly want and then he goes somewhere else, you know, you lose out. Do you find that frustrating? Well, it's the nature of the game, isn't it? And, you know, we're, we're trying to nick players off other people ourselves. So, you know, we're, we're all in it to win it. We're all trying to mug other clubs off and try and get the best players and you know it, it's just it's the way it's the way it is so we don't get frustrated with it or anything you just don't put it out there you know you make sure that you 
you, you have the policy that you don't mention um, anything on speculation or, or on a, even fact at this time. Sometimes, you know, where you've actually, when somebody comes up with speculation and it's a fact, you don't say it's a fact. Mm. Um, so, no, people, you know, people know, they don't mind asking. Fans love to throw names in, mm. but uh, sometimes they're a million miles away from the mark. Sometimes it puts an idea in our head, and uh, and sometimes it's true. Uh, so, but as a club, you know, we have to officially, you know, we we can't delve or dabble in speculation.